Hello, I'm Dr. Shama Rakov from the Center for Men's and Women's Urology in Portland, Oregon, and welcome to Ask Dr. Rakov. I'm going to take on an uh, issue that I've previously discussed, but uh, there were a number of questions uh, after the last time on this, and I don't know that I made myself uh, adequately clear. So I'm going to take on a common issue that we see and maybe approach it in a little different way, and hopefully it will be uh, of value as well. And the issue that we see as urologists very frequently um, are people who are referred to us because along the way when they've been gone through some sort of a physical exam or were seen in their primary care physician's office, they were noted to have blood in their urine. It's a very, very common issue and it generates a lot of um, concern and a lot of office visits, especially to urology. I'm often asked the question, um, do I need to worry because someone saw blood in my urine? And I'm going to try to approach this uh, in a manner a little different than I've done some of the other videos, and I'm actually going to refer to, a, to a, an individual that I saw last week. It's a 40-year-old male who in the distant past smoked a little bit, I think back when in his college days, uh, went for a routine work screening test where a urinalysis revealed that he had some blood cells in his urine, he had never seen any blood in his urine. And it was referred to me to determine whether or not something was concerning or dangerous or not. And as I previously uh, explained, when we see things in the urine, we have to understand that the urine is produced in the kidney, goes down through channels and tubes to make its way to the bladder, and finally gets sent to the outside through a tube called the urethra. Both men and women have a urethra. They obviously urinate through different structures and but for the most part when we're talking about things like blood in the urine just accept uh, the, the, that anywhere along that way be it the kidney be it the, the channel from the kidney to the bladder and then thereafter can have abnormalities irritations or things that are dangerous that could be the source of the bleeding and therefore obviously it makes sense that if we're going to evaluate someone for the blood in the urine we have to evaluate all those structures but here's the problem, and it's depending on what study you look at. It's really, really uncommon for an otherwise healthy person who only is found to have blood in their urine to have something dangerous. The vast majority of time, and I'm talking about high 90% of the time, it comes from non-worrisome kidney changes that will never impact a person one way or the other. So I'm going to talk to you about this individual from last week. 40-year-old male. The reason I brought up smoking is that smoking is the most common reason why people will develop cancers along their urinary system. But it's usually people who smoke for years and years, prolonged exposure. We also see it in people who have been in some chemical industries. We don't see that very much anymore, but it makes sense that's, that chemicals, nox, toxic chemicals can cause problems like that. But for the most part, we don't find we don't see cancers in young people unless they've really been exposed to some dangerous things. Now, blood in the urine, we don't we we mainly worry about problems like cancer, but we also look for other issues such as kidney stones, which under certain circumstances you really would want to know about before they make you show up in an emergency room uh, in terrible pain. But the reality again is a 40-year-old male who really has no medical problems, never saw any blood in his urine himself has a low chance of having anything. But there was a little bit of, of history. Um, perhaps some of the descriptions that I asked him about his urinary characteristics, he said, you know, there are times when I have to go, I do have to go. We call that urinary urgency and uh, under certain circumstances that reflects irritation. Normally when you have to go to the bathroom, you get the message, but you can hold off. But if it starts to become apparent that it's not so easy anymore, that's taking the step into the other side. I could have justified reassuring him based on the fact that statistically, unlikely to find anything. And the tests that we do are not fun tests. One of them is we have to take a scope, a thin scope, and with use of local anesthetic, but we have to look at the system with a scope. And you don't want to have that done if you don't need it to be done. I did it, didn't expect to find anything, merely did it for reassurance, which I think is legitimate. If you're nervous about something, really you can't be reassured unless you have the tests. 
and in fact found a little tumor. And this just reminds me of the fact, and something that I'll tell you as well, that the limitation of what we have in medicine is that our tests are not that good, and sometimes uh, we overtest. And that will be forever the debate that we're going to have raging between those people who say medicine is too expensive, the tests are, are overdone, we can't afford it, and you hurt people by doing the tests. We always have to balance that by the reality is that tests are the only way we sometimes find things. For that 40-year-old gentleman who could have been reassured and would have been reassured perhaps by somebody else, that test was absolutely worth it. My problem is that the next time I see a 40-year-old man, I don't know which camp he falls into. Does he fall into that one group that really we will find something, or does he fall into the other group that we won't find something? The arguments for doing the test are legitimate in both ways, but one thing is for sure. If we don't test, we don't find. Which is, and a corollary to that is, if a physician reassures you that you're okay without doing tests, that's a hollow reassurance because we don't have any other way of doing things other than the tests. Blood in the urine, statistically, likely without having any other signs of irritations or exposures to things that we know cause cancer is highly unlikely to be associated with anything dangerous, but not always. And the choice, when we say that you have to make a decision between you and your physician, therein lies the choice. If you want to be sure, which is legitimate, you have to go through tests. I'm Dr. Shama Rocco from the Center for Men's and Women's Urology.